Audiva Deva Sanskrit and Pali, Mongolian Tenjur Tenur in Buddhism is one of many different types of non-human beings who share the godlike characteristics of being more powerful, longer lived, and, in general, much happier than humans, although the same level of veneration is not paid to them as to Buddhas. The concept of Devas was adopted in Japan partly because of the similarity to the Shinto's concept of Kami. Other words used in Buddhist texts to refer to similar supernatural beings are Devata divinity", and Devaputa son of God". While the former is a synonym for Deva deity", the latter refers specifically to one of these beings who is young and has newly arisen in its heavenly world. Types Deva refers to a class of beings or a path of the six paths of the incarnation cycle. It includes some very different types of beings which can be ranked hierarchically according to the merits they have accumulated over lifetimes. The lowest classes of these beings are closer in their nature to human beings than to the higher classes of Deva. Devas can be degraded to humans or the beings in the three evil paths once they have consumed their merits. The Devas fall into three classes depending upon which of the three dhatas, or realms, of the universe they are born in. The Devas of the Arupiyadatu have no physical form or location, and they dwell in meditation on formless subjects. They achieve this by attaining advanced meditational levels in another life. They do not interact with the rest of the universe. The Devas of the Rupadatu have physical forms, but are sexless and passionless. They live in a large number of heavens, or Deva worlds that rise, layer on layer, above the earth. These can be divided into five main groups. The Suddhavasa Devas are the rebirths of Anagamans, Buddhist religious practitioners who died just short of attaining the state of Arhat Brahma Sahampati, who appealed to the newly enlightened Buddha to teach, was an Anagami from a previous Buddha. They guard and protect Buddhism on earth, and will pass into enlightenment as Arhats when they pass away from the Suddhavasa worlds. The highest of these worlds is called Akhanistha. The Bratfala Devas remain in the tranquil state attained in the fourth dhyana. The Subhakritsna Devas rest in the bliss of the third dhyana. The Abhisvara Devas enjoy the delights of the second dhyana. The Brahma Devas or simply Brahmas participate in the more active joys of the first dhyana. They are also more interested in and involved with the world below than any of the higher devas, and sometimes intervene with advice and counsel. Each of these groups of deva worlds contains different grades of devas, but all of those within a single group are able to interact and communicate with each other. On the other hand, the lower groups have no direct knowledge of even the existence of the higher types of deva at all. For this reason, some of the Brahmas have become proud, imagining themselves as the creators of their own worlds and of all the worlds below them because they came into existence before those worlds began to exist. The Devas of the Kamadhatu have physical forms similar to, but larger than, those of humans. They lead the same sort of lives that humans do, though they are longer lived and generally more content, indeed sometimes they are immersed in pleasures. This is the realm that Mara has greatest influence over. The higher devas of the Kamadhatu live in four heavens that float in the air, leaving them free from contact with the strife of the lower world. They are the Paranirmita Vasavartan devas, luxurious devas to whom Mara belongs, the Nirmanarati devas, the Tasita devas, among whom the future Maitreya lives, they are also referred to as the contented devas, the Yama Devas or Devas of the Hours, the lower Devas of the Kamadhatu live on different parts of the mountain at the center of the world, Sumeru. They are even more passionate than the higher Devas, and do not simply enjoy themselves but also engage in strife and fighting. They are the Trayastrimsa Devas, who live on the peak of Sumeru and are something like the Olympian gods. Their ruler is Sakra. Saka, as he is called in Pali, is a Sotapanna and a devotee of the Buddha. These are also known as the Devas of the 33. The Katarmaharajikakayaka Devas, who include the martial kings who guard the four quarters of the earth. The chief of these kings is Vaisravana, but all are ultimately accountable to Sakra. They also include four types of earthly demigod or nature spirit, Kumbandas, Gandharvas, Nagas and Yaksas, and probably also the Garudas. Furthermore, you should recollect the Devas, there are the Devas of the four great kings, the Devas of the thirty-three. 196. D.H. Feeders of joy we shall be like the radiant gods Devas.
sometimes included among the devas, and sometimes placed in a different category, are the asuras, the opponents of the preceding two groups of devas, whose nature is to be continually engaged in war. Humans are said to have originally had many of the powers of the devas, not requiring food, the ability to fly through the air, and shining by their own light. Over time they began to eat solid foods, their bodies became coarser and their powers disappeared. There is also a humanistic definition of Deva male and Devi female ascribed to Gautama Buddha, a god is a moral person. This is comparable to another definition, i.e. that hell is a name for painful emotions. Powers Devas are invisible to the human eye. The presence of a diva can be detected by those humans who have opened the divine eye. Divyachaksis, Pali, Dibakaku, Chinese, Tian Yan an extrasensory power by which one can see beings from other planes. Their voices can also be heard by those who have cultivated Divyasratra, a similar power of the ear. Most devas are also capable of constructing illusory forms by which they can manifest themselves to the beings of lower worlds, higher and lower devas even have to do this between each other. Devas do not require the same kind of sustenance as humans do, although the lower kinds do eat and drink. The higher sorts of deva shine with their own intrinsic luminosity. Devas are also capable of moving great distances speedily and of flying through the air, although the lower devas sometimes accomplish this through magical aids such as a flying chariot. Topic. Differences from Western polytheism Buddhist devas differ from the Western conception of gods and angels in several ways. Buddhist devas are not immortal. Their lives as devas began some time in the past when they died and were reborn. They live for very long but finite periods of time, ranging from thousands to at least billions of years. When they pass away, they are reborn as some other sort of being, perhaps a different type of deva, perhaps a human or something beyond comprehension. The Lamram mentions that devas are often reborn into lower realms of suffering like the Narakas and Pratas because their existence consumes a lot of good karma, but they can also be reborn as humans and animals. Buddhist devas do not create or shape the world. They come into existence based upon their past karmas and they are as much subject to the natural laws of cause and effect as any other being in the universe. They also have no role in the periodic dissolutions of worlds. Buddhist devas are not incarnations of a few archetypal deities or manifestations of a god. Nor are they merely symbols. They are considered to be, like humans, distinct individuals with their own personalities and paths in life. Buddhist devas are not omniscient. Their knowledge is inferior to that of a fully enlightened Buddha, and they especially lack awareness of beings in worlds higher than their own. Buddhist devas are not omnipotent. Their powers tend to be limited to their own worlds, and they rarely intervene in human affairs. When they do, it is generally by way of quiet advice rather than by physical intervention. Buddhist devas are not morally perfect. The devas of the worlds of the Rupadhatu do lack human passions and desires, but some of them are capable of ignorance, arrogance and pride. The devas of the lower worlds of the Kamadhatu experience the same kind of passions that humans do, including, in the lowest of these worlds, lust, jealousy, and anger. It is, indeed, their imperfections in the mental and moral realms that cause them to be reborn in these worlds. Buddhist devas are not to be considered as equal to a Buddhist refuge. While some individuals among the devas may be beings of great moral authority and prestige and thus deserving of a high degree of respect in some cases, even being enlightened practitioners of the Dharma, no deva can ultimately be taken as the way of escape from samsara or control one's rebirth. The highest honors are reserved to the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Topic. See also Bodhisattva Buddhahood Creator in Buddhism Nat Spirit Shinbutsu Shugo Yidam Topic References Topic Further reading Robert E. Buswell Jr., Donald S. Lopez Jr. 2013 The Princeton Dictionary of Buddhism Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press. pp. 232-233. 
ISBN 9781400848054 Retrieved of June 2015 Trainer, Kevin 2004 Buddhism The Illustrated Guide Oxford Oxford University Press ISBN 9780195173381 Retrieved the 22nd of June 2015 Norman K R 1981 Devas and Adidevas in Buddhism Journal of the Pali Text Society 9 145 155